Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where together we are going to be diving into the Bitcoin chart. I will be going over the latest move to the downside and where that leaves us right now. I'll be answering the question that's on your mind of should you be worried about Bitcoin right now? Is this a time to be really scared and fearful of a much bigger lower move to come? Or is this a natural retrace? Are we looking to buy the dip? And, and you know, we'll see further upside to come. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be answering that in today's video. I hope that you really, really enjoy it. And uh, as always, just pay attention to what I say. You've got to focus on the words that I give in this video. It's very important that you pay attention because we will be giving you the levels that can make you paper money right now today. So without further said ado, let's go. So Bitcoin, uh, if we just add on some levels of analysis, okay, obviously yesterday, just just over 24 hours ago, we had a really big move to the upside. And what happened on this really big move to the upside? Well, really simply put, we came up into our CC level of resistance. Again, this is very simply taken Fibonacci retracement from the high of that move back on the 2nd of March down to the low of that move on the 7th of March. Okay, we put on this Fibonacci, the high to low. We put on our template of the CC and you can see we came right up into the top of that there on the 9th. Yes, being, you know, 12 hours ago, we come up into the top of this CC. Okay, we obviously had a few different reasons of confluence around this level of why people were taking shorts around here. And, you know, one of the main things was we obviously had this triangle idea. Of course, that played out a lot quicker than expected. But nevertheless, you had the triangle out of around that just above $42,000 for, for an E. Uh, on top of this, of course, the, the, the CC itself. And there's a few things that I actually want to bring attention to here of why this was an easy trade and also a very difficult trade. And in my opinion, like this was a fairly difficult trade. Why? Because this move up was actually the original move up. Okay. It was, was very strong. When you look at the, you know, the, how the move was fueled by the really big increase of volume, really nice delta, really nice op open interest on this move. This is a, this is considered a really strong move to the upside. Okay. So you're moving up very, very strongly. Okay. You're moving up, you're moving up, you're moving up. You obviously come into $42,000, which is of course this recognized resistance zone. But at the time I would personally be playing caution. Okay. I wouldn't want to be too aggressive. Again, this was at 6am yesterday, but we're aware of the levels. And then it's a simple case of trading what's happening. So yes, you get this really strong move to the upside. So, so where was your one and only, in my opinion, short opportunity in terms of an aggressive short? And it was when you put in this original high, Okay, this is down on a bit of a lower term time frame up at the highs here, but you can kind of see what happens here. What happens is you put in an original high, Okay, so you put in this original high on this candle and then you basically do a very small, but nevertheless still there swing failure pan. So you can see you have this original high, you know, a few hours later, you come up and take that high once more. And if you see here, you did have nearly 20 million longs opening up into that high with, you know, the 16 million positive delta with the OI increase. So this is obviously a really potential scalp. I would refer to that as a scalp trade for sure nothing more. Um, and then it becomes when it, when you get this sign of weakness. So obviously off the back of that swing failure pan into the top of the CC into, you know, those areas of the triangle. One I still think is th that's considered for me as, as a more of a quick time time frame trade. Why? Because you're shorting onto lots of strength. So where does this weakness come and alert you to, okay, we're always thinking in terms of probabilities. We're always able to update what we're thinking. We're not stuck to any one bias. We have to trade the charts, not what we want, not what we think, but what's actually happening. So upon seeing these trap longs into a swing fire pattern of the CC, we get off the back of that a market structure change. Okay. And then where does this become what was at first a really bullish, healthy move to the upside into something that looks very, very bearish, leaving then millions and millions of trap longs on the breakout. Well, it's obviously where you get that larger market structure structure change. Okay. And all of those new longs that have opened are now underwater. And this is why this move to the upside was really quick. Yeah. The move to the upside was really quick. You get then a lot of FOMO. Again, I would not 
be buying into this. I think this is clear as day. There's, there's no way I would ever get bullish into this CC. But you know, 95% of the market that doesn't understand this, they're like, oh my God, Bitcoin's breaking out. This is so bullish. I need to long right now before I miss out. And you know, this is the case of what's happening up here. Your larger traders, they're main, remaining patient and they're looking for the shorts up here because there's no long opportunity after a 10% move to the upside very quickly into CC resistance. It's just just not how we trade. Um, and what happens here is what looked very healthy at the time, okay, ends up being more, well, very bearish with the final bit of trap longs at the top. And then really it's the market structure change off the back of this. You obviously fall down, you know, a few percentage points here and you go sideways for about three hours. And again, if, if you've studied any of the materials that we teach, longing here during this consolidation period is an extremely risky trade that is not recommended. Why you're in an extreme inefficiency, you're in like massive rows of single prints and the highest probability is that you're going to come down and fill all of this. Okay, so this is a time where you can look for short positions if you missed the original shorts as this is a this is a much easier short and you know it's a, it's a time of <laughs> expect lower and obviously off the back of that you got another over 5% move to the downside so that's really briefly i wanted to start off this video explaining how in my opinion yes this was a fairly difficult short position because at the time well in the morning before you had any of this original you know um, continuation this looked like a very strong move then we got a trade you know you're still given a short trade off the top of the a swing failure pattern into the CC, you're still given that short position. And then it's, a, a, you know, adjusting the trade, a, you know, a, acknowledging what the probabilities are. And once you change that market structure, okay, you lose the original range because you actually had a mini range up in here as well. Okay, once you lose that a range, you're then left with millions and millions of, you know, breakout traders, traps, they're going to get liquidated. And, and that's just why it's also important to recognize why it was very probable if we started to lose that market structure, why we were going to see, you know, a complete retrace of the move up. So just a few things there that I wanted to point out. Uh, and yeah, congratulations to the people that, that managed to get into those short positions. I actually had too many people <laughs> tweeting me their really good shorts that um, I couldn't retweet all of them. But obviously a lot of people taking, you know, really nice short trades. So congratulations to all of you. And now I'd like to move on to what's happening now, the, the resistance and supports that I am really looking to, to um, you know, get involved in here. I just want to do a few really quick announcements very, very, very quickly before we get on to come down onto a lower term time frame of what's happening here. The first is, obviously I've done my uh, contenders live stream on hedging last night. And um, yeah, this was actually a perfect one because we're talking about shorting Bitcoin, the importance of it. And, you know, hours later, we see a massive move to the downside. So if you want to learn about hedging, okay, this is a, quite an advanced trading strategy, uh, but it's of utmost importance. It's one of the fundamentals for me of trading. So if you want to learn how we're doing that on a day by day basis, that's in the latest contenders live stream. So you can go over and check that out now. And the second update, of course, is we've already had uh, a special live stream from Mike this morning for the group. That was uh, about a 40 minute live stream. George, of course, is going to be doing his five minute daily update this morning as well. And then another live stream later on in the day from George of about an hour to need sometimes even two hours live stream where he'll answer all your questions and answers. So, yeah, we're pumping out the content every single day for the members right now. Last night, the contenders live stream already Mike this morning with a special update because of the volatility. It's very important to go over that and make sure people are aware. And <laughs> later today, there's going to be two more members only videos released. The special five minute update for the people low on time and then an hour long to two hour long update of the live stream answering all your questions and answers. So content galore, if that's of interest to you, new new learning platform, chartchampions.com. You can go over and check that out for sure. OK, and um, yeah. Actually, there, there was one final thing that I wanted to mention. Sorry, there was <laughs> one other thing that I wanted to mention here. And that was actually this post that I made on the Discord. And it, it was it was just really quick referencing. I mean, you can pause the screen and read this if you want. I'll just read it out really quickly. And it's it's about the uh, titles that we put into YouTube videos. I just want to emphasize and stress, it's very, very, very important to listen to what we say in the videos, okay? You watch our videos for the technical analysis that we give you. You watch our videos because we are professional with our analysis and we give you levels that are actually tradable and well respected. Yeah, we are very calm, collected with our thoughts. We are not looking for the breakout longs. Oh my God, it's going to a million dollars. No, when you listen to what we say, we're, we are very, very professional set mindset. Of these are the levels to trade. Let's be open to long and short and let's just take the highest probability trades. Okay, of course, YouTube, 
the common practice is, you know, you want to have a lot of exaggerated titles. So I just want to, you know, really emphasize this, that obviously some of my videos, the titles are even copy and pastes. Yes, yeah? so it's, it's complete satire. If you understand my sense of humor, <laughs> it's satire. And at the end of the day, I think it's very important to recognize you do not trade off the title of the video. Sometimes the title of the video is, is completely different. <laughs> you know, it's just very important that you actually listen to the content. Otherwise, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to be confused. Yeah, listen to what we say. Don't read the title. Um, uh, it's also important to uh, acknowledge that, uh, you know, uh, YouTube actually recommends creators to change the title and thumbnails of videos after the upload to try and find a pair which better meets the YouTube algorithm. So title and thumbnails can be changed after uploads, but the video itself can never be added to for change. Okay, so I mean, I could even put on this video long Bitcoin and then in two hours change it to short Bitcoin. Yeah, the titles of videos can be changed, the thumbnail can be changed, but the actual content itself can never be changed. So it's important you actually listen to the content because that is set in stone in history forever. And what we're actually saying is is very, 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 very important. The, the title, not so much. I just wanted to bring that to some people's attention because the majority of people love the titles and they find them funny. But there are a few people that moan about the title saying it's exaggerated. This is just common practice in the industry. Uh, it's nothing new and, you know, that's not going to change, to be honest with you. It's just what works. So why would you why would you not do it, to be honest? And uh, yeah, but the, the important thing to note here is is that the, the the title, you shouldn't trade off of this. You need to listen to the listen to what we're saying. And with that said, let's get back on to what's actually happening right now. That was a bit of a longer <laughs> announcement than what I thought. Um, so yeah, obviously we saw the rejection of the CC, a really, really quick move to the downside. So what are some actionable levels that we can be looking at today? Well, this old daily, you remember this old daily that we were trading off of, um, you know, earlier this week, actually, it was the daily level with that CME gap. Okay, we knew the confluence that we had there. You can actually see really, really nicely how this originally acted as a support for a very small bounce to the upside, instantly lost, you know, well, instantly about, you know, half an hour later, lost, flipped into resistance. We see another move to the downside, another test of the daily. We know you were talking to the dollar here with very, 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 very accurate level, let's, let's be honest bringing us another move to the downside, actually bouncing off the range point of control here, by the way, with another swing failure pattern. And this is what I'm saying. I mean, even yesterday, there were long opportunities to be had. You know, even though we're up at resistance, and I'm saying we never long resistance. Obviously, I'm talking about swing trades. There's still like scope longs to be had up here, just as like down here on a massive move to the downside. There's still scope shorts to be had. There's still scope longs to be had. So it's, I know it's this is a this is advanced. We, you know, <laughs> we are one of the best trading communities in the world. Period. So of course, we're not going to be just talking about really simple stuff. You can keep it simple, and you can also go advanced. But you know, it's very important to acknowledge that we are multi time frame trading. So sometimes I'll be saying, you know, this is a really bad, you know, I'd say, for example, this is a really bad, uh, this is a really bad time to long up here because you're longing into high term time frame resistance. Obviously, when I refer to it, it's a really bad long up here, I'm referring to swing traders. You know, if you're trading on the one minute chart, well, there's actually many longs to be had up here. Okay, just as when we're down here, I would say, you know, this is not really a great time to short, we just we're down 6% on the day. Um, you know, and I'm obviously referring to swing traders. Uh, you know, if, if you're on the one minute chart, you know, this, for example, is a good short trade. Again, okay? you can take it down to the swing fire pattern of lows where you can reverse it back into a long. Because why? This is currently just really simply a range. So it's very important to acknowledge the time frames. <laughs> you know, and I, I know unless I directly say it, some beginner traders are going to be confused by that. But it's not too difficult if you understand. But yeah, really simply, we actually have a range at the moment between the daily, okay, and this high volume node, which is a large area of volume down here. So we're looking at this intraday support around 38,600. And I think we can acknowledge the, the bigger resistance is, is naturally going to be the big 40,000 level. But that daily, again, it is an old daily, it has been tapped now once, it's been tapped twice. The more times we hit a level, of course, it increases um, the probability that it will be weakened. Uh, the more times you test a level, the weaker it gets. But currently, we're really simply range bound between these two levels okay so a big high volume load of support there at around 38,600 we have this old daily level which isn't my favorite level in the world anymore because it's already been tapped twice but nevertheless it's still our level to be trading off of at the moment and that's coming in at about $39,400 okay we're breaking this to the upside naturally we're going to be looking back up well it's kind of a it's kind of a difficult one because of the the fact that when you actually come over to the TPO, TPO charts here, you know, you've got to be aware of all these single prints. So I say $40,000, but really we're looking at those single prints starting to come in there at about 39, 39 500. Uh, the buy and sell are currently off, off the high volume node. 
Okay, but um, yeah, I, I think the, the the way that I would approach, or well, no, not that I think, but the, the way I am approaching this is is initially a, a little range going on here. And I said I'd answer the question: Is is this a time to be scared? Is this a time to be fearful? Of course, my answer is going to be no. This is not a time to be scared. This is not a time to be fearful. Um, you know, if you approach this market in a state of fear, an emotional state, you, you're going to lose money with 100% certainty. Okay, or let's just say 99% certainty, because there's always a degree of luck. Um, but if if you are covered in here absolutely fearful scared annoyed frustrated um you're gonna you're gonna lose money okay the high probability is you'll lose money you need to if you miss the short it doesn't matter if you miss the long it doesn't matter what's happened has happened you cannot change the past but you can change the future so come into the market today with a mindset of hey whether you missed some trades, whether you made money on some trades, you don't want to get overconfident just as you don't want to become depressed. You want to say, hey, this is the current range I can be trading. If we break the top of this range, I know my next level to the upside where I can be looking at for these single prints. I think they're very important today. Likewise, if we do get another move to the downside, I know the high volume load of support. If we lose this, naturally, I'll look for the next level to the downside. So I think that I would approach this today with a mindset of, yes, there's extreme volatility, but at the end of the day, I still have a mini range to be traded. I know what to do if this range breaks to the upside. I know what to do if this range breaks to the downside. I am ready and prepared for my levels either side, and I can trade this range until it breaks again. It's already really given two winning trades. It's given, in my opinion, two trades, potentially three, but two quite easy trades and two wins. So maybe the third trade is a loss but we're still walking away there with obviously more wins than losses and the, the winners are naturally going to be bigger than the losses. So it's, it's important to acknowledge this. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to, to say, no, it's not a time to be fearful. It's not a time to be scared. It's a time to trade the levels as we would do every single day in the market. Um, yeah, and wow, this was the video that I wanted to bring you today. I hope I've given you a bit of clarity. I hope I've given you some understanding of why the move to the upside um, was happening and then why the move to the downside was so quick uh the levels that we can be approaching right now okay and the mindset that we need to have as traders of hey we can come into this market make money on the longs make money on the shorts trade these initial ranges and being aware of the game of probabilities that is if we break to the upside let's trade to the next level if we break to the downside let's trade to the next level level to level trading extracting money from the market every single day ladies and gentlemen i hope you've really really enjoyed the video I'll end one final time with saying if you want to see all of the updates that we've been doing recently, that's obviously, of course, our new learning platform, chartchampions.com, where you get all of the educational content as well. You can learn everything that we teach. So, um, yeah, I hope that you've really enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that like button, give it a share. Say thank you very much. I will say from my part, CC Paul, send their regards, and I will catch you in the next video that we release. Thank you ever so much, everybody. And I'll end with the disclaimer, of course, no financial um, or trading advice in any way, shape or form, just an educational entertainment video only. Thank you ever so much. And I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.